wanted to do a quick little video on a new addition to the bench. This little fella followed me home yesterday. It's a Tektronics DM2510G digital multimeter. I don't know much about this particular model of meter. There's exceedingly little information available on the internet, at least as far as I've been able to find, concerning this model. Um, but the, the few bits of information I have been able to find suggest that this is a meter from the 1980s uh, or very early 1990s era. It's no longer manufactured or supported by Tektronics. There's no manuals available on the Tektronics website. I think that implies that it was discontinued before 1995. And moreover, the usual sources on the internet uh, for manuals of late model equipment uh, don't, don't have anything. So I have managed to find the technical specs out of an old Tektronics catalog, and we'll go over those in the video. But uh, as I said, this followed me home yesterday. I paid $40 for it, so I took a chance on that. Uh, and the question is, was this any good? Was this wor worth 40 bucks? The answer is, yeah, I think it is pretty good. I've played with it a bit uh, for the last couple of hours, and it appears to function, and function quite well, thank you very much. So, let's run through the rigors and see how it performs, and uh, see what kind of a little multimeter I got here. All right, I'll link the source of this document uh, down below in the video. But this is what appears to be from a Tektronics catalog. There's no date given, but as I said, I'm pretty sure it's before 1995. And in fact, because this section of the catalog talks about both the CDM250, uh, which is another multimeter that I have on my bench, and as well as the DM2510 series, uh, I know that this is a 1980s vintage meter, so I suspect that this one is contemporary. So this is, uh, as I said, this is a programmable multimeter. It's got a GPIB computer interface. It will measure DC up to 1,000 volts, uh, AC 500 volts RMS. It will measure AC in dB does the usual business with current, uh, not an inspiring range of resistance, up to 20 mega ohms, but perfectly adequate. Uh, and the, uh, the nice thing about this is that it's auto-ranging. Unlike the CDM250, this will auto-range on all of its functions except for temperature. Well, there are some other features that uh, we'll probably go over and demonstrate shortly. But uh, just kind of take a look through the specific specifications on this. Uh, as usual, we have a 10 mega ohm DC input impedance. You know, the usual common mode rejection uh, ratios and normal mode uh, noise rejection. Um, this is nominally a four and a half digit multimeter. Um, the accuracy on the DC range is quite quite good. It's uh, typically 0.03% uh, through all of the ranges, uh, plus, of course, the kind of usual counts that uh, depend on the range that it's measuring. The rest of the, uh, the rest of the uh, specifications are pretty typical for uh, high-end meters of that era, and perfectly adequate for most bench work. Uh, certainly, most bench work that that I do today. A um, couple other things that are noteworthy: the uh, these specs quote a warm-up time 
and uh, for the 2510 series of meters it quotes 30 minutes warm up time or 60 minutes after high humidity storage. Well I have no idea about the history of this particular unit or how it was stored or, or for how long it was stored or whether or not it was abused before it went into storage and, and I bought it. But um, I've had it on for probably going on eight hours today and it appears to be pretty stable. Um, let's see, what else? It's a hefty little bugger. It's a little over five and a half pounds or 5.2 pounds uh, without a power cord. Um, and the frequency response is you know, pretty uninspiring. Uh, you know, 20 hertz to 50 kilohertz. You're not going to be measuring RF with this like, like you wouldn't any other digital multimeter. Uh, but but you can see that uh, you know between 20 and 50 kilohertz the accuracy really does really does plummet. All right, let's uh, let's check it out with a instrument that we've seen here on the bench before. This is the uh, VoltageStandard.com DMM checker, and we're, first of all we're going to uh, run through the uh, DC. Uh, volts, then the AC volts, we'll look at current, and then finally we'll look at the uh, precision resistors on this. All right, I've got it set on DC. If I push the AC button, you see the little uh, AC symbol over there, but we're going to start off on DC, and it's auto-ranging, and you can see the fluctuation in the millivolt range. So this would be really disturbing if this weren't millivolts, but uh, you know, we're more than happy to let it fluctuate like that with no input. All right, so the DMM checker should supply five volts and snaps into action and we see that we've got five volts bang on right on the nose. So that's good. Let's go to AC um, and so we have to switch that to AC. Now this will supply a square wave output that has 5 volts RMS value. And you see that we get, again, just bang on right on the nose, 5 volts. Uh, and so this is a true RMS meter. Uh, interesting that it doesn't have true RMS plastered all over it like most multimeters do now. Uh, but it's true RMS. so. So that's good. All right, let's look at uh, current. So we're going to change the probe to put it into the current. And we're going to go to milliampers. And we're going to put it back on DC. All right, so this should put, uh, this should supply one milliamp out on DC and you see we go right there bang on rock solid at 1 milliamp let's go now to AC and we get our should have a 1 milliamp true RMS signal out and there it is bang on rock solid I will say that when I first tried this this morning, that the current uh, didn't read didn't read anything, and that was a little irritating because this had been claimed to have been tested and functioned on every range. Well, you can guess what the issue was, and the issue was this. Uh, when I pulled it out and looked at it, it looked a uh, little suspicious and uh, measured a, a huge resistance uh, when I tested it. So when I changed the fuse, it uh, functioned just like it should. All right. So now let's go to resistance and let's replace the probe. And the first thing that we're going to do now is we're going to measure the 100 ohm resistor. 
and you see we get 100 ohms right on the nose. Now we're going to look at 1 kilo ohm, and there's 1K. Again, bang on. 10K. 10 kilo ohms right on the nose, and 100K. And there's 100K. All right. So there you go. This looks very promising and seems like it's a functional meter. All right, one other thing to just demonstrate that I thought was somewhat interesting. So we're back on the DC volts measurement now. You see we've got 5.000 or 4.999. This is in the four and a half digit mode, but I can change that uh, by hitting program three or four digits and go down to three and a half digits and then off the program. So first thing you notice is this is just all over the place. Very high refresh rate. In fact, I think it's greater than 10 if, if I remember the, the spec correctly. Second thing is you've got one less digit up here. So now if I go to measure the five volts, I've got 5.00 and the third digit is gone. So that's rather interesting. It's not immediately obvious that you would want to do that often. Although if you wanted the higher refresh rate, then that's one way to do it. So let's go back to our four and a half digits and there we go. So that's all well and good. It appears to be working according to our reference source here. What doesn't seem to work on the meter? Well, I did notice that uh, it has a temperature port here. So one thing I did was grabbed one of several K-type thermocouple uh, leads that had come with other DMMs and plugged it in. And right off the bat, I got numbers that didn't make sense. I was able to find through, I think it was a post on the EEV blog forum, where someone had uh, asked about a probe for this meter. And, uh, and it turns out that these don't take K-type thermocouple probes, but rather uh, requires something called a platinum resistance temperature detector. So you can get these on uh, online auction forums and things like that. They are typically expensive. So I doubt that I will be using this to measure temperature anytime soon, but I rarely do that anyway, and it's just easier to grab a, a simpler probe type to do that with. Uh, let's see. So. That's pretty much it. Just a, a really quick video to show off my uh, my new functioning Tektronix voltmeter auto ranging. I will use it on the bench. It appears to be adequately accurate. In fact, probably even admirably accurate given complete lack of knowledge about how this has uh, been treated throughout its life. Although it is in very good condition, it required very little cleanup. One thing that I do want to point out that is a bit of a mystery to me. Let's go back to the resistance here. You see the fluctuation down in the uh, rightmost digit. So it's ranging now 0 0.7, 0 0.8. It's mostly fluctuating between those two. This is something that I notice on any range. Well, there it's rock solid, isn't it? Uh, here we go. So this is fluctuating a bit. And let's go up to the 100K. It's fluctuating a bit. And in fact, if we go to, uh, let's see, voltage, and we go back to our voltage measurement, it's fluctuating a bit. I mean, not enough to cause any trouble whatsoever making a functional measurement on the bench. But it is a bit curious. I don't see this when I measure this voltage source with other DMMs. And so I do wonder why the uh, instability in the rightmost digit. Uh, I thought that you know perhaps it was a warm-up issue and by leaving it on for several hours that would tend to decrease and maybe it has a bit. It's really hard to say. Uh, another thing that I thought it might be was um, you know maybe the uh, lead the, the, the shrouded lead 
jacks were perhaps a bit dirty. And in fact, they were dirty. Uh, I cleaned them out first with isopropyl alcohol on a couple of swabs, and you can see there's the uh, Q-tips that um, took off some oxidation. And uh, then I put a very little bit of deoxid on. And you can see that um, you know, inserting this into these uh, probe jacks, I removed some more dirt. Um, and I'll probably do that a bit more over the coming days just to see if I can improve the stability uh, on, on those. I don't know if this was a, a, a normal quirk of this particular model uh, or if there's something internal, you know, tantalum capacitors or, or some thermal instability that maybe has to do with the warm-up. I, I don't know. But I'm really happy with $40 for this meter. In its heyday, this listed in this catalog for uh, $695. So this was a $700 meter in the late 80s, so it would be a lot more than that in today's dollars. I um, don't usually kind of show off new equipment, but I like this a lot. It completes uh, or at least adds to the other stack of Tektronics equipment that I have here uh, from roughly the same vintage. And um, I didn't see any other videos on YouTube for, uh, for this particular model. So there's my contribution for the day. Tektronics DM2510G programmable digital multimeter. Hope you found this interesting. If so, please give it a thumbs up below and thanks for watching.